for Father Higgins during 1949-1950. When Margaret Ellen Paul, Bishop Armstrong's secretary, entered the Sisters of Mercy, Jean was hired as Bishop Armstrong's secretary. Bishop Armstrong was succeeded by Bishop Joseph Thomas McGuckin, and Jean continued as Bishop McGuckin's secretary. When Bishop McGuckin was appointed Archbishop of San Francisco in 1962, his successor was Bishop Alden John Bell, Auxiliary Bishop of Los Angeles. Jean continued as Bishop Bell's secretary. Bishop Bell was succeeded by Bishop Francis Anthony Quinn as the seventh Bishop of Sacramento. Jean continued as his secretary. Bishop William Keith Wiegan, who is our presider at this mass this morning, was named the eighth Bishop of Sacramento and Jean continued as his secretary. Jean always had a great smile, was efficient, faithful, friendly, happy, and a pleasant person who served as secretary for five of the nine bishops of Sacramento, probably the longest serving bishop secretary in America. The Catholic Church of Sacramento owes a great deal of thanks and gratitude to both Jean and Lily Tamaki, who gave many years of service to the bishops, priests, deacons, religious sisters and brothers of the Diocese of Sacramento, and to the whole people of God. As you heard, we were interned at Tule Lake, and um, although there were many injustices there, the one thing that Jeannie was most grateful for was at the internment camp, she was able to learn the Catholic faith and was baptized a Catholic, and for that, she is forever grateful. Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe me? This is the fundamental question. Do you believe this? Jean believed this. The witness of her life underscored her belief. Jean revealed her faith to all of us in the courageous way she lived her life consistently. In the Beatitudes, Jesus speaks of injustice. Jean and her family experienced injustice and prejudice in their lifetime. Even in light of this suffering, Jean was steadfast in faith in her daily life. It's clear to me that Jean revealed, lived her faith. We who mourn the death of Jean are poor in spirit, for we've lost the physical presence of a beloved member of our family and a great dear friend. And yet, we draw strength from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, where he assures us that the love of Christ will conquer all sadness, persecution, and death. He tells us nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ. Like Jean, 
we believe in God's promise of eternal life. We thank God for the remarkable gift of healing to Mama. She was a gift to all who knew her. I know you all join me in saying of Jean, well done, good and faithful servant. Go share your master's joy. For our sister Jean, that she may receive the happiness of eternal life, promised in her baptism into Christ Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, in a special way, we pray for the eternal repose of the souls of George Natsubio Tamaki, Lily Tamaki, Calvin Takasaki, Virginia Kimura, Bishop Robert Armstrong, Archbishop Joseph McGuckin, Bishop Alan Bell, and Bishop Francis Quint. May they see God face to face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Father of mercy, we commend our sister Jean in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Jean in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant Jean and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister Jean forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace now let us take our sister Jean to her place of rest. <laughs> 